So it's beyond an emotion. Oh, that is so emotional. Uh, listen, that's good, but we can be we can be higher than that. Oh, that was so deep, you know, the pro process of, of uh, compositional. No, 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 no. I don't, I need to go beyond. So here we are, uh, finally. We were like preparing this moment for, I would say, a month or something. And it's finally happening. And yes. I'm very happy for it. So I have the absolute pleasure of having my dear friend Pedro Eustache here with us. Bless you. Pedro has been interviewed before several times. He has been interviewed on radio, on TV, uh, in South America, in, in the States, uh, in Europe, etc. What they usually do when they interview Pedro is mainly focusing on his career and mainly focus, focusing on, on what he does on stage, which is fantastic, as a musician. Uh, primarily. What I want to do now is try to uh, get Pedro from a different angle, oh, that's uh, an angle that is uh, good. that is also very well developed in Pedro's character, I would say. And that specific angle, it's the most uh, inquisitive one, is the angle that includes um, his uh, ability to acknowledge that there are other domains that are not necessarily uh, related to music, that are important for understanding music. Correct. And that there are other ways of approaching uh, music that are non-traditional or that they're non-mainstream. And we're going to discuss a bit about that during, during, this, uh, during this interview. Our first idea was basically trying to ask the general question of what is music. Mm. That is extremely ambitious. We are incapable of answering the question. But at least it's some kind of teaser for starting a nice discussion from a multidisciplinary point of view. Pedro as a musician, Pedro as a lecturer, Pedro as someone who is interested in the phenomenology of music, and myself as a neuroscientist who, is, uh, who has been interested in, in consciousness and in how the brain generates experience during the last, I would say, 10 years. That's the motivation of this discussion. Thank you for the pleasure and the, the honor and the blessing of doing this. I, I think it's extremely necessary in a world that, without being negative, huh, being just extremely yeah. pragmatic, in a world where normally mediocrity is rewarded, it's important to address um, relevant things. I have to say that some of the most interesting conversations I've had uh, ever on the subject of music have been with Dr. Andres who happens <laughs> not to be a professional musician, but wow. a neuroscientist. And is for me, is both rewarding and incredibly uh, funny, paradoxical in a way, to be able to convey and to connect and to share at a level that is deeply relevant in the matter of music with somebody that happens not to be a musician when I know that I cannot do the same with 90% of professional musicians. <laughs> that's kind of paradoxical. And that's a great accolade for you, but it's the truth. And that's a very practical way for me to, for the first time, introduce you from my point of view. And we can say probably later how we connected, which is an incredible anecdote. I think we connected immediately because of one reason. If you remember, that was uh, in London? Correct. Wembley. Wembley, exactly. And, well, I, I am a massive fan of Hans Zimmer. So I've been in, in his concerts like three times. And when I saw Pedro during 2017 in Glasgow, I was telling myself, okay, so, so that, that man is actually from Venezuela. I, I, I want to meet this guy, but... To me, it was like, okay, that would never happen. But for those things that Pedro would call coincidence, God in, God <laughs> Correct. I don't believe in coincidences. That's true. During the World Hans Zimmer tour, I had the opportunity for, for a reason that was completely random, that I was staying with a friend in the hotel in front of the Wembley Stadium. The next morning after the concert, I was having my breakfast and then suddenly the whole band was around me, which is very interesting. And then I saw Pedro and I said... Oh, I have to say hi to this man. And like this. Yeah, it was it was it was like magic. It was we like magic. connected. You asked me what I was what 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 basically I was doing in life, and then I said something like, "Well, I'm a neuroscientist who studies consciousness." And then your your eyes weren't like a bit like, a, "Wait, wait, wait, wait!" But you're from Chile, right? What what are you doing in Cambridge studying uh, consciousness? <laughs> and then I said, "Well, 
some yeah some sometimes good things happen to people <laughs> that's beautiful and then i remember that i mentioned the word um phenomenology and then it was like this uh, kind of weird thing that for some reason we immediately knew what we were talking about yes um and 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 yeah and that that was it then we started like having conversations on skype and and Correct. it became like a very solid uh i would say connection between the two I want to um, poke you, t to tease you with something that the Oxford Dictionary says about music. So it's the definition that the Oxford Dictionary gives us about what music is. Mm -hmm. And it has two main definitions that I would like to read to you. The first one is, it says, music is a vocal or instrumental sound combined in such a way as to produce beauty of form, harmony, and expression of emotion. That's the first definition. The second of them is a sound perceived as pleasingly harmonious. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so I have to say that probably, even though I have no idea about music from a, from a first person perspective, we both would agree that that's not what we mean by music. No, I would not agree with those things at all. At all, at all. Just to try to conceptualize it. So for you, Pedro, what is not music let's start simple not music is what 95 percent of people might call music i might start with something that might sound uh arrogant that might sound really controversial mm -hmm. uh, but I, i stand by it i stand by it with with uh strong reasons i am um a deeply inquisitive person by nature I think it's a family disease. <laughs> I, okay. I would, that's a blessing, but it, it is. And as a musician that I am, I am a communicator. I want to become the absolute highest level possible communicator that I can be in order to be effective. So I'm going to start with a reality that is a reality that defines who I am. From there, I will get to the definition of how can I call music what it is. As an artist, I owe it to myself to be true to my, to my reality. And um, I am a follower of Christ. And as such, I am deeply convinced that in my DNA as a human being, it is the reality that I am built, that I have been created to worship. I think that's universal. Now, worship what? That's different. Some people worship money or whatever. I believe I was built, and I believe every human being is created to, to lead or to have a transcendental connection with the creator of the universe. Nothing is bigger for me. Being a communicator, I need to deal with the nitty-gritty of what it is entitled in my expression of communication. And music is a very important part of that. So, what I do as a musician is a consequence of who I am. I am a worshiper of the living God. So, as a consequence of that, I play music to glorify God. And I'm quoting Bach here, Johann Sebastian Bach, the greatest musician that of ever all. existed, ever. And I can stand my ground with those who defend Beethoven and those who defend Mozart above him. That's another conversation. We can talk about that beautifully. Uh, and by the way, I'm a Mozart freak. I always say <laughs> I that what that. I love of Mozart is that. he gives me the illusion of accessibility. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me That's think I can access Yeah. Him. And and no, when you start analyzing and then, it, you yeah. go kaboots. But with Bach, not even not even an iota of access. So it's like it's another level. Bach would say that music exists to glorify the God and to sublimate, to elevate the human soul. That's been my motto since I'm 17 years of age. And as such, Dr. Andres, I have been searching at every level, creativity, erudition-wise, uh, compositionally, instrumentally, technically, uh, e emotionally, spiritually, how to develop. My calling is more than a craft, it's more than a profession, it's more than a career to the highest level possible because I believe that the creator of the universe 
deserves the best. Not that my excellent or my best could ever reach the plant of his foot, you know. Uh, but my point is, that is what nurtures, motivates my wanting to get better. Based on a discipline called musical phenomenology, yes, which I can define after studying the greatest authority on that, the founder of that, the super genius, multi-talented, multi-faceted, multi-directional genius called Sergio, Maestro Sergio Celibidake, a conductor, musician, a mathematician, a philosopher, is the main influence I have in musical phenomenology, which is different, we have talked about this, from uh, phenomenology as it is in philosophy with Husserl and all, and all that, Yes. Uh, musical phenomenology is literally quoting him. This is verifiable. Yeah. This is all in the internet and Italian and everything. But he says that musical phenomenology is the discipline that searches to regulate the laws through which sound under certain circumstances can affect our consciousness, and I add, and move it into transcendence. Wow. So super okay. easy. So what is music? Music, based on this reality, when we talk about loss of perception, that means entitles to be out of the realm of criticism, out of the realm of personal opinion, out of the realm of geographical, cultural, idiosyncratic, or even chronological boundaries. This is heavy. This is controversial. It's yeah, I like it. And it goes to a place of free, of universal reality. I sound kind of new agey, but it's not. It's, <laughs> it's true. It's true. He brings yeah. this thing to a to a place of universal reality. Yeah, that it's literally is besides the opinion of somebody. And I finish by yeah. saying this: music is basically when we can transcend through sound. In other words, it's when sound under certain circumstances, very long to explain, but we, we can do that. We're going to talk a little bit about that because otherwise sounds flimsy, you know? Um, yes. It sounds like hearsay and uh, or just empty words. Is when it, under certain circumstances, sound becomes sonic art, thus affecting our consciousness into transcendence. Then we leave this material world, which curiously is what I experience when I worship God. Mm, I leave I this see. material world. I go to a higher place. I'm closer yeah. to God. And of course, that transcendence, that elevation, when it happens, it can be seen and explained and described differently by the experience of different people but the experience of transcendence is universal exactly and i want to and I, i i think that's crucial to me at least from my point of view because i think to me the the most powerful thing about the phenomenological approach in general if i can generalize about it is that regardless of the content of that experience so regardless of what we want to feel that experience with, the experience itself apparently is something universal. So it's something that doesn't depend on a point of view, that doesn't depend that doesn't depend on time, doesn't depend of on culture, doesn't depend on anything. It's just another universal. You can feel it with whatever kind of content you want. So for instance, in your case, you have this experience of transcendence that is filled by the content of a transcendental God, right? The way I, I define my transcendence is literally connected with the Creator. Now, check this out. Based on what you just said, one of my masters, uh, uh, Aurel Nicolet, he was an atheist, and he didn't call it anything. Yet, it's funny that a socialist that lived in Switzerland... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Not poor. <laughs> yeah, not precisely poor. Exactly. Yeah. Atheist yeah. would tell us in his master classes, by the way, he's one of the greatest masters that ever existed. He's the teacher of great, great, great flautists in the world. In fact, 
the first solo principal uh, uh, flute player uh, of Berlin Philharmonic, Emmanuel Pau, studied with them. The solo flute player at a radio uh, symphony in 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 uh, in, in um, Köln, Cologne. The solo principal flute, one of the two in the Paris Symphony. We're all co-disciples. Emmanuel was younger than us, but the other three, we were all yeah. together with with with. It's funny that while we were studying with Nicolet, he would say from his mouth, I do music because then we get out of this material realm, we go to another place. He didn't even know how to call it. For my teacher, the great Ravi Shankar, that elevation meant a way of salvation. Mm. So, based on these realities, we might see it differently. I don't think that challenges the, the reality of the transcendence, simply the connotation that is behind it, which is, I think, another, another probably another uh, discussion. You know, we, we can talk about that, and I can argue in a beautiful way on each one of them. But I, yes. agree. I interrupted you. Please keep going. I was just trying to, to reflect up, upon that specific point that uh, for, for the phenomenologies that I have read, including Husserl, and later on, Heidegger and all the, the philosophers with H that people call that starts with H. It's the primary experience, the, the, the pre-reflective one, the, the one without language, the one that doesn't have form, the experience that actually matters. Whatever you want to feel that experience afterwards, the content of that experience is secondary to, to, the, to the experience itself. So I, I don't know if I could call it secondary. I would call it is a parallel reality, but that experience is... And something I want to point out about the, 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 the big names you mentioned, and this, I learned everything I'm saying, I learned from Charlie Bidake concerning this, and as a consequence of studying with two of his students, disciples, Maestro Markan Takar, who wrote a book that changed my life, which if we can, doctor, please, we should... Uh, add yeah, these things in the note at the end. We are going to add links in the description with all some of the yeah references that we're talking about. Yes, His book called uh, Looking for the Harp Quartet, Beethoven's Harp String Quartet, uh, it's, it's, it's a masterpiece. It's, it's, it's a book of the ages. Um, people can read my review on Amazon.com. Literally, the title is the book, This Book Changes Everything. What happens is, having been introduced by him, and now I'm starting with Maestro... Cristina Cozel, who is for many, many, many years, decades, a uh, disciple of Celi Bidak, and I'm applying with her in praxis, in music, this principle. The difference with the big guys you mentioned, the big geniuses you mentioned, is where musical phenomenology departs a little bit from philosophical phenomenology is mm -hmm. that I heard him quote them saying that, I don't know if it was Husserl or Heidegger, one of the two, that said, consciousness is always conscient of itself. <laughs> yeah. And the absolute fundamental principle of the experience that we are trying to describe as music, or we do describe as music, there is no presence of consciousness. We have transcendent that because if I'm aware of my consciousness I'm still at this thinking yes. realm this goes this supersedes this goes beyond thought so it's beyond an emotion oh that is so emotional listen that's good but we can be we can be higher than that oh that was so deep you know the pro process of the compositional thing. No, 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 no. I don't... I need to go beyond. Great. So, we have, uh, I think, five minutes before the break. Excellent. So, I'm going to ask you something, uh, if you can just respond in five minutes. I'll try my best. So, for someone who is just, let's say, listening to this uh, interview for the first time, who is, like, <laughs> absolutely lost about what we're talking about, but that person might or might not be a musician. Um, if you would have to like summarize what is musical phenomenology, what would you say it is? I'm going to put it even That's simpler. It's like Maestro Cristina Cozel taught me three weeks ago. 
to the Pedro, they need to understand that musical phenomenology is the science of the musician. <laughs> okay. It's literally the discipline that deals with the loss, loss of musical perception. Literally, he, he said it is. There are laws the same way there are laws for 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 vision, and yeah. there's uh, Arnheim. We know that book of uh, yeah. uh, uh, visual art and, and perception, which is incredible. Where he describes so incredibly uh, how our brain uh, perceives, you know, yes. gestalt Shapes. and all those things. And exactly. this same thing exists in music, and it's called musical phenomenology. That is simple. Yeah. Less less than three minutes. <laughs> great. That's great. That's beautiful. It creates the link that we need for studying it, for studying music scientifically in this definition of music, and it also links immediately the topic to to neuroscience and to to people that study brains because perception is ultimately something that happens in a brain, <laughs> at least at certain level, right? Absolutely, no, 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 and not only that, I, I will extend even more what you just said. This is also good for musicians. They need to understand what is the nitty gritty of what we do. Not yeah, only to so play, that, to play an instrument, to move, to know, move fingers. Yeah, yeah, that's for the next half an hour. Yeah. That's gonna be deep. So we're gonna cut here for a couple of minutes and then we'll Excellent. go back. Very good, Great. let's do that.